Hey everyone, my name is Victor. I'm a core member of the Human Note team. We're building a distributed financial system where one human equals one node. Like, uh, or as we say in IPFS community, one human equals one replica. Why? Uh, well, every public permissionless, uh, now they're blockchain networks, they are based their security on uh, capital. They base security either on stake tokens or on equipment of miners. And uh, well, this, uh, this approach is susceptible to external attacks. Like when you have a network with higher capitalization than this one, it can easily attack it either directly buying out assets or it will create a secondary market outside the target network and basically manipulate the price of the asset in eventually buying out the target network asset and attacking this permissionless network. And uh, what we're doing in human out, our security is based on collective verification of human existence and all people who became human out. Uh, I have to say, frankly, we had that idea like almost for three years, but we had no idea how to implement that. And it became possible only in 2020, thanks to advances in biometrics, especially liveness detection, uh, thanks to advances in matching of uh, fully homomorphic encrypted biometric data, uh, thanks to the private computations in permissionless manner by uh, guys from Enigma. And of course, well, huge kudos to the Protocol Labs team uh, for inventing and implementing the Merkle Certity cluster. Well, basically, when we have a network where one human equals one node that is capable of financial transfers, that means that the fees that the network that the protocol collects will be divided equally among every human node. As there is no block reward, because uh, again, we're using the APFS invention, which is uh, Merkle Certity, any monitor system can be built upon without these block rewards. And uh, moreover, it opens uh, doors and the way to the one human, one vote decentralized organizations. And as you have seen, the like state tokens DAO are just terrible at the moment. Well, uh, thanks to the blockless nature of Merkle CRDT, uh, we've got pretty cool features there uh, compared to blockchain. Uh, first, less redundant metadata, uh, and uh, second, flexible transaction persistence time. Uh, that means that uh, if you're sending like $10 to your friend, and you don't really want to pay the costs of this for this transaction, for this data to be kept forever. Uh, what we can do with Merkle Certity, uh, we can uh, unpin the data from IPFS, not hold it anymore. And basically the costs become lower and lower. Uh, of course, if you want to keep the transactions, uh, feel the heat death of the universe, you're always welcome. Uh, now, how do we implement IPFS here and uh, where do we use it? Basically everywhere. Uh, and uh, let's start from the like creation of human node. Okay. Uh, what we do, we ask people to scan their biometric modalities. Yes, first we're using like external biometric modalities, uh, face recognition, fingerprint, and iris recognition are among the most advanced, for example. Uh, but you know, later, if we find out that that's not enough for security, uh, we're also going to introduce in internal biometrics. Uh, that means neurosignature with brain-computer interfaces or DNA. But uh, let's go to the slide which explains how can you create a human node and like how the system works. We have three actors here. It's a uh, client device, public IPFS cluster, and a private smart contract. So 
this public IPFS cluster, it actually gets, uh, well, it, it's public. Uh, you will ask how we can put biometrics, such as sensitive data there. Well, we first encrypt it with full diffeomorphic encryption right on the client device. And only then we send it to the IPFS cluster. Uh, basically, when a potential human node submits its uh, encrypted feature vector from the biometric modalities, the public FS cluster performs one-to-many computations over that data to find out whether this person was a human node before or he's really a new one. Uh, well, basically, after that, we get the score. We get the score that tells us has he been there before or not? And uh, the score is then sent through the client device to private smart contract. The score is again encrypted. We have to decrypt it right there in the private smart contract. And uh, the private smart contract understands what the score means. And then he authorizes the public key of uh, the client to have a validator key or not to have it. So now we like have permission for a new human node to finally join the network. Let's look at how the network looks like. Uh, yeah, here we came up with a nice figure for Merkle Serdity, but uh, I'll jump straight to the tech. Uh, we reuse existing tools from the IPFS project to implement networking and then the replication level here. Uh, we use Miracle CRDT for the state replication. And uh, it becomes possible now to implement a key value store, uh, which uh, looks like Miracle trees uh, in AAVL from Cosmos. So thanks to the Protocol Labs team, we can leverage a data store component that provides a unified interface to access data. Uh, we're picking a distributed Go data store implementation using Merkle CRDT. Well, it is basically based on the Badger DB as permanent storage. It uses uh, LibP2P, PubSub, and the provided PubSub broadcaster as a broadcaster component. Uh, a user defined DAX syncer component to publish and retrieve Merkle DAX to the network. And uh, for the interface, the node initializes an uh, IPFS live client. So thank very much, IPFS team and Protocol Labs. You were a great inspiration for us. Uh, basically, when all the external components are properly mounted, the data store is ready to be used by a node instance. Since it's a key value store, we use prefixes to define separate data buckets. And uh, well, here for the application logic, which represents transaction processing and validation logic, we defined two sets of buckets. Uh, the first set includes epochs, which we use instead of blocks in classic blockchains. And uh, each epoch has a number as a key, that points to a list of transactions. And uh, on application level again, transactions, uh, which is a bucket holding set of confirmed transactions. And uh, consensus participants here decide whether to include or not to include transaction into that set. Uh, if the transaction is confirmed, it's CID, uh, content identifier, and validator signatures are added to the set. And uh, the body will be replaced through DAX Syncer. Well, basically, the second bucket represents uh, accounts and validators. Well, this is this is where we like combine the knowledge that we have from the public blockchains, uh, Cosmos mainly, and IPFS, and this is how we'll build the human node network. Thank you.